2024 Mercedes AMG GT63. Three seconds. Wow. 4.0 liter V8 by turbo. Let's go. Uh, 110 km per hour, 120 and 130. How is this possible? In 2024, we have even better sound than in 2021 in the AMG. Hello guys, Ivan here and welcome to new video. So you can see here with me 2024 Mercedes AMG GT63 and this is the latest and greatest second generation GT Coupe and in this video we'll go for a drive of course and before that we will do a quick walk around and we will listen to the sound as well and special thanks to AMG Performance Center Bratislava Lamach for having us here today with this amazing GT Coupe so if you enjoy this episode don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you are notified for all upcoming episodes thank you very much for your support alright guys so now it's time to listen to the V8 sound let's do this Guys, let me know what you think about the sound in the comment section down below. Alright guys, so first of all, I showed you this car in full in-depth review on the channel uh, before. So if you want to see everything about this car, then don't forget to check it out on the channel. But right now, we will do a quick walk around and we will check what is under the hood. So, something very good is under the hood, I can tell you that. Here we have, check it out. Wow, how hot is this? So this is 4.0 liter V8 by Turbo, handcrafted in Falterbach, the home of AMG in Germany. 585 horsepower, 800 newton meters of torque, coupled with the MCT speed shift 9G. We have also Formatic Plus system, all-wheel drive variable system for the first time in the GT. Now also two plus two seater, so four seats. And this car is now all weather ready, all year ready, we can say. The sprint from 0 to 100 km per hour, 62 miles per hour, happens only in 3.2 seconds. So it is super, super fast. We will try how this car will handle the acceleration with the race start and what kind of numbers can we get. So here we can see Mark Berendt is actually a person which handcrafted this particular engine so this is really nice that they have still these heritage uh, badges on the engines so now the engine is at the front axle because we need more space in the interior two plus two seats and before it was behind the front axle front mid engine on the first generation so this one is uh, like uh, with the concept like this the new sl shares the same concept uh, platform with the new gt and also two plus two seater so you can also get by the way the roof with the, the sunroof this particular car does not uh, have this but you can get it i would uh, recommend to get it if you want uh, so you can actually open it but you cannot open it for the air only for visuals from the inside with the sunshade so yeah this is uh, mark uh, Barrens once again and this is hot V setup so the turbochargers are on the top of the cylinder heads for better response some heat shields here as you can see and the well, important stuff you can see for the maintenance here is actually windshield, windshield washer fluid and battery access so really really a piece of art this engine So yeah, let's do a quick walk around and we can see also that this car is in beautiful silver paint, uh, so-called silver arrows for the racing Mercedes uh, cars. And this is a uh, high-tech silver, really beautiful paint, a little bit of the light blue in it, but uh, yeah, a lot of silver. So I would have actually a hard time to pick color for this beautiful car. We have so many paints now on offer with manufacture as well. I added uh, new colors on the Instagram. If you want, you can 
check it out. So first let's do a startup. So we have warm engine, so that's why the startup is a little bit quieter than of course on the cold start. But check out here the revs. How amazing is this? One of the loudest AMGs for sure. And also, when you are driving, it has really crazy sound. So when you are downshifting, upshifting, it has so much actually noise from the pops and uh, records that it's actually <laughs> crazy. Check out here the sound. So uh, yeah, for a car of this day and age, is actually unbelievable. What kind of sound can we get from this car? And this is of course with the OPF and all kinds of emissions. Um, emission regulations uh, which are necessary these days. All right, and here we can see the look with the front LEDs. I don't want to leave the car on idle too much, but uh, I wanted to show the LEDs and they are on proper way only when the car is started. Uh, we need to charge the battery a little bit as well. So, wow, this car is so good. It's uh, really unbelievable for me to, to see this car. We have Night 1 and Night 2 package and also you can see the cooling here. So this is not like a black plastic uh, here. It's actually opening for the cooling. So you can see also this can open for additional cooling if it's necessary. Oh wow. Also a Falterbach badge here and the paint is just work of art. Wow really really amazing so the front hood is a little bit shorter than the first generation gt but in person i can tell you that it's like it's short of course but it's still long as you can see so it's not like a super super short still uh, pretty long in my opinion beautiful amg wheels with the yellow calipers these are steel brakes you can also get the ceramics so from the beginning it was not possible to order ceramics now uh, I'm not exactly sure but I would recommend to get the carbon ceramics uh, if you can and if they are of course available 295 30 ZR21 and these are Michelin Pilot Sport S5 the latest compound and the ceramics were not uh, previously actually available and in the rear we can check out the size 30ZR21. These are the most expensive wheels which you can get on this car. They are magnificent. You can also get the same design but in like a gold um, actually color. We have also AMG performance seats, pop-up door handles and check out here the AMG in Napa leather and also 2 plus 2 there. So those are smaller seats for kids or people which are not uh, very tall, up to 150 centimeters or so. And you can also see here the three uh, LED lights as a taillights. And of course here we have the spoiler. So let's open the spoiler here with the button. Okay. So this is maximum position. It opens automatically as well at the certain speeds at different angles to give you downforce. But I think it looks super cool with the spoiler up. Of course, you can also get the aero package, but that was also not available since the start. So um, yeah, I would recommend to check uh, with the dealer. But uh, yeah, I really like the aero package. Uh, as far as I know, it's now available once again, the aero package. So I would get the aero package and also the ceramic brakes. Here is GT63, Mercedes and AMG in dark chrome because of the night package too, as well as the front uh, AMG grille. Of course, we have squared exhaust pipes in dark chrome as well with AMG logos, diffuser with the blade there, and lights are sort of connected in terms of the design in the middle. Really beautiful shade. Um, 
of the silver and shape check out here the shoulder line how huge and how wide is actually the shoulder here the car shoulder absolutely magnificent design i can talk so much uh, about this but uh, i think it's time to to go for a drive but first let's check out the boot because here in the second gen gt it's much larger 321 liters you can check out the size at the screen also in cubic feet and in liters my backpack tripod uh, also the suction for the cameras you can also fold uh, this section as well with the seats so you can get a lot of uh, practical stuff done and you can transport uh, super uh, long objects in terms of this and here underneath you can check as well you know underneath let's check you can also you see here some additional stuff what is this yeah you have more stuff there so yeah a lot of space actually this car would be amazing for road trips here you can fold the seats check it out <laughs> wow this is absolutely crazy it's like a station wagon in a sports car how crazy is this how much space you can have in this car is ridiculous check out here space absolutely crazy you can also transport even there a little bit longer if you wrap it in some some uh, something what will not scratch your car of course but yeah pretty pretty crazy usability golf bags will be not an issue uh, even two I believe maybe even three it's that big this car okay and it's so easy to put it back into place so yeah I'm not going to sit there I did it in the previous video and uh, certainly it's uh, possible but not comfortable for me and not really safe I would say so also check out you can press here you can also kick under the boot but the car should not be started uh, in that um, in that way if we're kicking with the foot under like this I think if the car needs to be turned off but you can also kick like this here we can actually turn off the car and uh, can turn it off with the key fob see so it does easy like with other Mercedes models you can kick like this and it will close how convenient is this so you guys now with the walk around we can now go and test this car how it actually drives and what we can expect from the sound and yeah overall driving character of this car so let's go wow three and a half seconds this was really <laughs> was really crazy but let's see what kind of uh, numbers can we get listen to the sound <laughs> this is crazy absolutely how is this possible in 2024 we have even better sound than in 2021 in the AMG this is absolutely crazy we need to have warm tires because we have some wheel spin in the back so let's warm up these tires and then we will see what can we get out of this car liter v8 by turbo let's go city if you go back into comfort mode now it's so peaceful so calm 
can open the exhaust if you want it will rumble but nothing crazy so this is universal car for every day for performance driving for going to the work you can go anywhere uh, with this car you can do thousand kilometers easy it's not even like uncomfortable it's stiff yeah it's hard because it's a uh, it's a proper GT and performance car and sports car but it's not your wallowy GT like uh, some GTs which are too comfortable no 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 this one is this one is really stiff when you need it the handling is really crazy this is what I, what I like it can be this is what I like about this car it can be also performance one it can be like a calm driver in comfort mode it's, it's basically everything you need <laughs> wow <laughs> three seconds wow all right so check out here the 360 cameras really high definition also with like a shadows uh, 360 bird eye view really great the visibility is fantastic uh, out of this cockpit and uh, really this car is ready for many many kilometers miles for for daily driving this is uh, such a nice package and you have a huge infotainment system here with the full screen apple carplay uh, android auto so that is also uh, very nice So yeah, I really like how this car is um, set up uh, in a comfort uh, comfort mode. The suspension is not too harsh, it's also not too soft, so don't lose uh, the sense of uh, occasion with this car, because if it would be too soft, you would lose the, the sporty character of the car, and um, in this way you don't lose it, because uh, yeah, it's not stiff, it's not soft is just right balance i would say so some people told me that uh, the the gt is much more stiff than the sl i would say i'm not actually sure if it's too much i would say a little bit stiffer but not something what is like a huge difference so um yeah actually i like the especially the suspension in the corners i would say that the gt can handle uh, better the corners and uh, then the sl of course it's, it's a setup in a way that it should be able to do that also we have a full assistance system package level 2 autonomy driving so the car speeds up automatically based on the uh, road signs and also it can predict it can see basically it knows from the system future speed limits and it will slow down sooner so everything here is um, tailor-made for very comfortable daily driving and I think this car is much better for daily driving and long distance driving than the first generation GT which was more on the hardcore edge let's say also uh, the boot was smaller it was pretty big but it was smaller definitely and yeah i would say that uh, the well, we didn't have any rear seats of course so we have uh, even more space there you can fold them so you can put like golf bags or other long uh, objects in the car latest infotainment system boardmaster sound system many many things which are high-end luxury so uh yeah manufacture colors now we have much more colors to choose from but what this car does well is also when you go into sport uh, plus for example or race mode the car wakes and you have you have immediately much better response uh, also the assistant systems are working faster in the sport plus which is interesting as well you can change this in settings that uh, it can change depending on the driving program or it will be always sporty or always uh, it could be um, comfortable 
Also the display Super Sport One Classic one, you can choose which one do you like more. And now for example the car keeps distance with the vehicle in front. So that is uh, uh, really, uh, really nice. Visibility is fantastic out of this car. I have a huge uh, windows uh, for a sports car. And yeah, everything is really nice. The mirrors are just on the side from my head in the viewpoint. The seats, I would think if I should go for the performance seats or comfort seats. If you are living in, in Germany, Switzerland, and I would say, um, of course, Austria, and some other countries uh, which have a very smooth surface on the roads, then yeah, the performance seats could be a good, good idea. But outside, if you're living uh, in places with, with not the best road surface, sports seats would be better choice because they would be much more comfortable and also for long distance driving. I'm driving today for a couple of hours uh, here and there and yeah, I can a little bit feel that the seat is, is uh, more stiff for, for longer, longer distance driving. So I would recommend to go and uh, yeah, order standard seats, they are also uh, less expensive and from what I heard uh, most of the customers prefer actually the comfort seats. How this car pops is actually crazy. <laughs> it's so loud. In the third gear, I think, and also in second, it's the loudest. absolutely yeah much louder uh, pops and uh, bangs the, the crackles than in the SL63 in SL we had them but here it's much louder much more in terms of the quantity and uh, yeah it's uh, really something what uh, but many people will enjoy for sure these pops and bangs I also was um, parking in the parking garage. It's not something um, difficult at all for me. Uh, sometimes I need to I need to go I need to reverse and turn because yes the, the car is longer. But I would say it's it's much easier than with this first gen GT. With that one for me it was too long the the front section. So uh, I felt like it's it's so so uh, in front of the whole car and I'm somewhere in the boot. Uh, so uh, with this one the, the parking is much easier I would say also we have rear wheel steer which helps uh, as well with uh, parking but also with uh, uh, agility also digital lights lights from the S class you have everything here tailor made from, from uh, huge luxury models are, are infused in this so if you take all the GT, you take for example the S-Class, you merge them together, S63 and old GT. This is the, the, the product which you are looking at, because we have a sportsmanship, sports, sport character of the GT we have here, but also luxuries of the S-Class, S63, uh, Formatic Plus and uh, yeah, a little bit more practicality of course, uh, because of uh, uh, all-wheel drive system formatic plus so uh, yeah a lot of things which make this car uh, basically so good for all weather use in winter this will be easy because you have all-wheel drive with the first GT you didn't 
you, 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 you couldn't see first GT almost I would say in the winter because people for, for, for one reason they didn't even buy winter tires because they didn't drive the, the car in the winter because it's a real drive uh, a brutal machine so nobody almost somebody I, I'm sure did that but not many people but the, with this car I'm, I'm sure much more people will buy actually uh, winter tires and uh, will drive these cars uh, in the winter okay so here we have a speed limit because it's basically traffic jam and for sure we can test uh, how this car behaves in the traffic jam Distoring plus cruise control this kind of stuff but of course you need to pay attention someone could drastically cut you from the side and sometimes this system is not ready for these uh, we can say brutal drivers so yeah something to to keep in mind uh, for sure in some other countries which are more let's say um, yeah uh, the, the drivers drive nicely more nicely uh, it could be easier but yeah of course every year you need to pay attention because um, this is not fully autonomous system so right now we have we actually can see here the icon which looks like a traffic jam and uh, yeah the car uh, is actually keeping distance uh, with the car in front and uh, super easy job actually for this car you can select the distance I'm as close as possible with the saved distance with, uh, with the car in front so that is uh, really really good also the car steers I can also see the arrows near the steering wheel so the car would uh, change lanes as well and I've also seen at lower speeds the latest system uh, assistance system latest version is, is also forming emergency lane so basically it's going to the shoulder of the of the lane of the road also of course blind spot assist these are uh, we can say basic stuff for the assistance systems <laughs> so now quite heavy traffic jam it's not jam because we are still moving but uh, very s slow we can say traffic we can talk about the consumption I will show you on the screen at different speeds I test tested uh, 100 km per hour uh, 110 km per hour 120 and 130 at uh, constant speed at some at some section of the of the highway uh, but the 100 is in, di in different direction more a little bit more south but it's more or less a uh, straight road and the optimal consumption versus the speed was uh, at uh, 110 km per hour I would say the 100 was the best of course because it's uh, the slowest but for many people uh, I think it would be slow only if it's your speed limit uh, 100 km per hour or 62 mile per hour then of course uh, it's uh, the speed limit at which you are driving so absolutely easy uh, to daily drive this car I would say just go for the normal sport seats everything is working really nicely in this new GT so for those people which the first gen was too brutal to hardcore they will be really pleased uh, with this one and it's also I would say smooth in terms of this uh, uh, transmission shifts smoother we have also traffic jam here in the tunnel so yeah this is uh, now it's forming a little bit I would say the emergency lane I am uh, really definitely closer to the white line than some other cars so yeah everything is working how it should
we can check out the ambient lighting here in the tunnel so we are at uh, 10 in terms of the brightness in terms of the colors we have 64 uh, monochrome colors this one is the most bright the blue one and we have like a red bunch of colors and then we have ocean blue miami rose malibu sunset burning blue Benny's pink, bunch of stuff uh, in terms of the bunch of um, options in terms of the ambient colors really really uh, much more luxurious than the uh, first GT so if I would personally have to choose I would choose this over the first GT over the standard version uh, like the GT or GTS I would say also um, over the GTC the GTR I would think a little bit and GTR Pro and um, the, the GT Black Series of course those are especially GT Black Series that's a legendary car but uh, this is as, as we can see the first model uh, the 63, 55 and also the 43 the 2.0 liter so those three are like first versions and let's see what we will see in the future from the GT lineup uh, I'm really curious to about this uh, about this model so as you can see it's braking and accelerating really smoothly uh, in comfort mode uh, depending on the, on the car in front so yeah that is really something enjoyable Now we are entering the city In terms of the room in the car I have um, I would say nice amount for a, for a sports car Now uh, we are in the quietest mode in comfort mode with the engine flaps closed but you can open them here if you touch on the button here on the screen and definitely you can you can hear that uh, making louder noises also I really like uh, how you can see here the map Apple CarPlay settings really a lot of uh, things which you can change with the settings here Also the indicators in the front, they are changing with the uh, daylight uh, running lights, they are changing basically to amber indicators. I like the super sports screen and also the classic one, those are my favorites, classic one more, more classic of course and the super sport more sporty. We can also see the temperatures, transmission, oil, engine oil and also the coolant. Alright, as talking about the fuel consumption, this is for today 20.4 liters. But I was sta uh, stationary standing filming, so this is also counting into that. In terms of the long term for this car, it's 19.6 liters per 100 kilometers. 6623 kilometers on this particular car. Of course, it really depends where and how you are driving, but you can expect this kind of uh, numbers uh, with this car. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. Thank you very much for your support, and I will see you soon in the next video. Have a wonderful day.